Recursion occurs when you have a process or an object that refers to itself in such a way that the process or object is repeated. You may have already seen this example of visual recursion. This can of chocolate has a picture of a woman on it holding a can of chocolate, which has a picture of a woman on it holding a can of chocolate. We say that the image is self-referential. It contains references to itself. Here we're going to see two examples of recursive operations on the computer itself. One of these operations is constructive, in that we're going to be recursively collecting information from the internet and creating a copy of it on our computer. The other operation is destructive. We'll be recursively removing files from a computer until it completely crashes. It's important for you to understand that both of these activities are being conducted by someone who has full knowledge of how they work. These demonstrations are here for your education and should not be used on your own computer without a more complete knowledge of the processes. The first operation we're going to look at is the wget command. You know how you can go to a web page and it has a bunch of links on it, and if you click on one of the links, it takes you to another page with a bunch of links on it, and that process can go on repeatedly until, with a whole lot of clicking, you might have examined every page on a website. wget allows you to perform that operation automatically. In addition to just clicking on the links, however, it downloads a local copy of those pages so that you can keep them on your own computer. I'm going to go to crashwhite.com slash hour of code to take a look at that site. This is a page I use with students to examine basic computer science principles, and you can see the various links here. This isn't an enormous site, but it's got quite a few resources. If you were going to be going on a trip and wanted to have a copy of this site that you could use on your computer while you didn't have access to the internet, you could download the site using wget. Let's do that right now. While the operation is performed, you can see that I'm getting a view of what files are being downloaded. I've also got a new folder on my desktop that contains those files as they're being downloaded. Once this process is completed, I'll have a local copy of the website that I can access from my computer. You might be curious about a couple of aspects of this recursive operation. First of all, as given here, this command is not going to other websites to get their information. I've linked to a YouTube video on this site, for example, and the wget instruction here will not retrieve that video. Also, you obviously want to be careful about the sites that you're trying to download. If it's a very large site, you could conceivably attempt to download more information than you have room for on your hard drive, which will cause all sorts of problems for you. Your computer relies on having empty disk space for completing operations. Your ordinarily tidy desktop can quickly start to look like this as your hard drive fills up with pages, or even just error messages produced by websites that don't allow you access. But let's take a look at what I got with careful use of the wget command. Opening this folder and clicking on the index.html file gives me access to a complete version of the website that includes all the local files available at that website. Again, this information was obtained in a recursive process, loading a page that contains links, and clicking on a link to load a page that contains links, and clicking on a link, and so on. The second recursive command we're going to look at is the rm command. The rm program removes files from your computer, more or less completely. If you use your mouse to drag a file to the trash or recycling icon on your desktop, you always have the chance to recover that file, at least if you haven't yet emptied the trash. The rm command removes the file immediately, with no ability to undo the result. This is obviously a destructive operation, and one that has disastrous consequences if you make a mistake or use it in the wrong way. Using the rm command on a single file removes it from your computer, and using a variation of that command will remove an entire folder from your computer. If you use the rm command recursively on a folder, it will dig down into that folder and all its contents, including files and other folders, and remove the contents of all of them. In fact, it's this command that your OS X or Linux machine actually uses when you decide to empty the trash from the desktop. So what happens when we issue the rm command on the root folder of the computer, the folder that contains everything else on the computer, including our files, folders, and the operating system itself? The computer recursively destroys the very software that it's running. 
In order for us to actually see this in action, we're going to watch a computer while it tries to execute the RM command on its own operating system. Let's see what happens. At this point, the computer is moving through its directory, removing file references from the operating system. In the command issued here, we ask the computer to be verbose in reporting the results. We're seeing the name of every file on the screen as it's deleted from the hard drive. This is only one of the many ways that your computer can lose data, of course, which is why it's vital that you keep a digital backup of your data on an external hard drive. How long do you think this recursive RM process will take? There, it's done. At this point, the computer has deleted most, if not all, of the software that it needs to operate correctly. Trying to boot up the computer at this point is useless. We can certainly reinstall the operating system, but all the data that was on the drive previously is effectively gone. Recursion is an important topic for math and computer science. In this presentation, we've seen two ways that computers are used to perform recursive actions. Having some idea of how recursion works will help you better appreciate its use and appearance in a wide variety of areas.